What is up Flutter devs? In a recent video, I told you that I was going to try porting processing to Flutter this year. And so I thought, what better place to start than to show you what processing is. Some of you might be familiar with it, some of you maybe not. Let's take a look at what processing is and I'll tell you a little bit about what I mean when I say I'm gonna try porting processing over to Flutter. Let's jump over to the desktop and take a look. Here what you see are a handful of processing windows. Let me tell you what we're looking at. Each of these windows is a different processing sketch. In the, word, in the world of processing, when you work on a little project, it's called a sketch. The idea is that you're quickly jotting down things that you want to do with graphics or audio, what have you. Your multimedia programming, you sketch it out really quickly, and then you can run your sketch and you can save your sketch. And here we have six different sketches opened up. You can probably tell immediately that each one of these windows, as I've mentioned previously, is kind of like one of the world's simplest IDEs or code editors. You can see that we have some source code here. I'll look a little bit more at that in just a moment, but we have some source code, line numbers on the left, a name for this file up here at the top. If there were multiple files in this sketch, we would see multiple tabs here. If you wanna run this sketch, you have a play button. If you wanna exit out, you have a stop button. Down here we have a console area, and then we have an errors tab. Again, a very, very simple version of Android Studio or VS Code or whatever your choice in uh, integrated development environment is. Processing when you download it, when you install it, it gives you this very, very simple editor environment. It also gives you some examples built in. So you'll see this little window right here. It says Java examples. By the way, this language is Java. That's the language. Here's a bunch of examples that come with processing. You can open up all of these different examples. I have six of them opened here. These all shipped with processing. And I'd like to show you each of these examples very briefly so you have an idea of what I mean when I say that processing is about you know, audio visual programming. We're just gonna look at the visual stuff here, but uh, the idea of sketching together quick not necessarily user interfaces, but animations, data visualizations, 3D scenes, 2D painted scenes, that kind of thing. Let's take a look at some of these examples. This first one here is called Regular Polygon. Let me run that. And here you will see the running sketch. You'll notice that we've opened up a new window and we have these three different polygons. Uh, a triangle, and I think down here we have names for these an icosahedron, if I pronounced that correctly, and a heptagon. So a triangle, an ico or maybe an icosahedron, and a heptagon. We are drawing each of these polygons using processing APIs. We are rotating them using processing APIs, and we're seeing it run here in this dedicated window. We'll look at a few other examples, but let me also show a little bit about how this, how the processing API works. Again, this language is Java, so the syntax that we're dealing with is the Java syntax. But you'll notice this setup method. Setup is a method provided by processing. When you implement a setup method, processing bootstraps that method at a particular time. Same thing with this draw method. We're essentially overriding a method called draw that processing invokes every single frame. That's how we're getting animation here. Processing invokes this method over and over and over and over again based on the desired frame rate, which for this screen without, no one's requested a special frame rate here, so we're probably looking at 60 frames per second. Now, there's also this method called polygon down here. This one is not an override. This is just a regular Java function that the person who wrote this sketch decided to create. This is a, uh, a procedure essentially that given an X and Y position, essentially a point on the screen, and given a radius and a number of vertices, it draws each of these polygons. You'll notice that each of these polygons have vertices that are equidistant apart. That means the same logic can be used to draw all of them. Start at the center, go out a certain distance, and then jump a certain angle around, and then connect them. That's what's going on here. That's exactly what's happening right here. You can see begin shape, put all the vertices out there, then end the shape, which means draw the lines between, fill it with a color, and here's what you get. 
Now that said, let's talk about a little more about what's actually happening here. A si uh, this procedure called size, which comes from somewhere, where does it come from? We'll talk about this in a second, but size is invoked to set the size of the window, 640 horizontally by 360 vertically. Setup runs one time. Then draw runs many, many times over and over again. And every time draw runs, the background color is set. 102 represents whatever that gray color is in the background. Uh, then notice that there are three blocks here, three blocks of code. Oops. Those are each of the shapes. So how are each of the shapes actually drawn? Push matrix says we're going to start moving around this screen and at some point we're going to want to go back to the way we were before we started moving around the screen. Push matrix essentially starts some transformations that can then be erased when pop matrix is called. So we say, okay, we're going to start some transformations. We're going to translate, which means we're going to move to a location on screen, in this case, right here at the center of the triangle. Then we're going to rotate by some amount, which is based on this parameter called frame count, which also comes from some magical place. But based on the frame count, we're going to rotate some amount. Then we invoke that polygon function, which, or procedure, which in this case draws the triangle. Then we're done drawing the triangle. Then we pop the matrix to go back to the origin up here at the top left. And then we do the next shape. The point is not to understand necessarily the intricacies of each of these calls. The point is to recognize that there are a bunch of these calls that are being made and it's unclear where they're coming from. Background, push matrix, translate, rotate, pop matrix. What are these and where do they come from? All of these are part of the processing API. These are all of these methods or procedures or functions, depending on what we're calling, they're all made available to us out of the box with processing. Processing implements this procedure called size, and it implements the one called background and push matrix and translate. Now, there are no import statements here because, remember, we are working in a code editor that was made by the processing developers. So it's automatically bootstrapping this for us. Like this is the Java language, but this is not a Java program because there's no, there's no class that we're defining this stuff within. There's no public static void main function or method to start to initialize the uh, execution of the program. It's a Java, it's Java language and Java syntax but we are all of that bootstrapping is done behind the scenes by processing and then processing automatically imports and gives us access to all of these various procedures. And that's kind of what makes this a sketchbook. The reason you jump in here and just start sketching away is because right out of the box immediately first you have a kind of an evented drawing system. So right out of the box, you have this setup method that's guaranteed to be called initially one time, and then you have a draw method that's guaranteed to be called over and over again for every frame at a desired frame rate. This is just available for you automatically, as are all of these other procedures. This allows you to jump in quickly. You don't have to worry about any other details. You can just start defining the size of your window, define your background color, draw a shape, and boom, here you are on screen animating. It's really fast and convenient for prototyping and hacking and experimenting. Let's take a look at a few other examples. I'll exit out of this one. Let's come over here to Bezier. We run Bezier, and the first thing you'll notice is that we have some curves. These happen to be Bezier curves, but also notice as I move the mouse or the cursor, the endpoint of the Bezier curves moves with me. This is because processing, not only can it paint a canvas, it can interact with the mouse, it can interact with the keyboard, it can probably interact with all sorts of other things using plugins to processing. But this is an example both of the fact that we can draw Bezier curves and that we have mouse support. So let's look at another example. Here's wave gradient. This gradient is drawn pixel by pixel using this sketch. This is just kind of a demonstration, one that we have uh, per pixel support in processing. You can paint every single pixel. You can paint it with interesting algorithms like this. Uh, in much like Flutter, we have kind of full control over the canvas in processing. 
pointillism. This just paints a bunch of circles, uh, but notice that as we paint circles, we don't erase the other circles that are already there. In Flutter, this is not necessarily a natural thing to do because Flutter is made for user interfaces where you kind of wipe away everything and render a whole new screen. So this is a little bit different, but just to be clear, you don't have to erase an image after you've drawn it. Uh, now, how, they, how it's accomplished in this case is that, uh, let's see, there is an image loaded here, but the question is what is painted? So we get a pixel from the image. I have to look a little more closely at this. The question is whether they are liter whether this sketch paints to a texture or whether this sketch just keeps altering a an in-memory image. I'm guessing it just keeps altering an in-memory image, which should be easy enough to do in something like Flutter. But again, I just want you to see the kind of variety of things that you can pretty easily and quickly do with processing. Also, look at how few lines this is. It's hard to beat the brevity here, right? That's what makes us good for quickly exploring what you can do visually. How about particles? This is a pretty nice particle effect here. Good looking particles. And we're, we're sitting up here in the upper left, if you can see it, around 60 frames per second. And we're creating a whole bunch of particles that follow the mouse all over the window. That's a neat little effect. And how about planets? The interesting thing here is that we have a pseudo 3D scene. We have three spheres in the scene. One of them emits light. Two of them processes the light that's being emitted. They are shaded based on both a texture. Actually, all three uh, have a texture applied, but one of those textures is a light emitter, and two of those textures shade themselves based on the light. So uh, in the world of processing, you can certainly go into 3D as well. This is essentially what processing is. And what you're seeing here as a tool has been used to teach, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of multimedia programmers. It's a great way to quickly explore ideas. It's also a great way to quickly learn the fundamentals of how to work with points circles, lines, rectangles, quads, ovals, textures, images, all of these primitives that exist in the world of graphics, because you can move so quickly, you can explore how these things work together and how to create visual effects using them. For that reason, I would like developers in the world of Flutter to be able to do the same kinds of things. I want Flutter developers to be able to quickly explore what they can do visually without necessarily needing to build out an entire app. More than that, let me get more specific. I would like instructors who are already teaching with processing as a tool, I would like those instructors to be able to use a Flutter version of processing. Imagine you're a student and you can either learn this version of processing or a Flutter version of processing. They would do roughly the same thing in roughly the same way but this one is written in Java, a language that is in many ways declining in, in uh, corporate utility, using processing as the, as the UI toolkit, which, uh, as wonderful as it is, you really aren't ever going to ship any apps built with the processing tool. You're not going to build apps using this code editor. You're not going to build apps using these particular APIs. But if you use APIs like this within Flutter, you're very close to Flutter, and Flutter is used in Android apps, iOS apps, web apps, Mac apps, Windows apps, Linux apps, embedded apps. It's used everywhere. So your path from education to the job market is like, you know, that far apart. Whereas if you learn processing in Java, you have a much longer path to make yourself useful in the job market. So I'd like to see educators embrace a Flutter version of processing so that the same concepts can be taught, but they can be taught in a medium that can also get you jobs. It'll still take a little more effort. You like, obviously, if all you know how to do is draw graphics primitives, that's not enough to build apps. But if you use Dart, and if you're working in Flutter already, 
it's a much shorter jump, leap or a jump over to the world of professional app development than if you were to start with traditional processing and Java and then try to figure out how to develop Android apps, iOS apps, web apps, Mac apps, Windows apps, Linux apps, and embedded apps. What I would like to do more specifically is have a widget that you can drop into your project. Now that widget can take up the whole window or that widget can take up just a part of your UI. But I would like for you to be able to drop in a widget that takes up some amount of space and it will be called something like processing for lack of a better term. Uh, and you will pass to that widget a sketch. And in that sketch, you will define a setup method and you will define a draw method. And in those methods, you will do the same kinds of things that you see in these sketches. In your setup method, I guess in the size probably won't be that useful because your widget will be whatever size you want. But I, like in this setup method, let's say, let's see where this one begins. In this setup method, images are loaded. Uh, a texture looks like is created. Uh, some Perlin noise stuff is done. I guess that's all commented out, but you could uncomment it, I guess. Uh, some initial preferences for strokes and fills are set. Creating a shape, a shape, a shape. These are each of the spheres. So in setup, you go create, you go load images, you create your initial uh, elements that need to exist. And then in the draw method, you paint the background. Uh, in this case, we're going to, again, push matrix to place our orbs or our spheres at various locations. And then when you run your Flutter app, this is one of your widgets. This is what you see in your processing widget so that you have the power of processing within the power of Flutter. This is the goal. And this will be an open source project. I'm going to try to build it video by video. Uh, I will put up PRs that probably come from the work that I do in the video. The repo will be publicly available, and I will occasionally publish updates to PubDev. That all begins right here, or technically the next video. In the next video, I'll just very quickly show you around the repo, and may maybe we'll get started with the, uh, the very initial widget structure. And from there, uh, you know, all engines go. We're full speed. We're going to see how quickly we can port over how much of processing. And there will be some challenges. There will be some parts that are really simple. There will be some parts that are more difficult. And there will be some parts that currently are impossible. But we'll deal with that when we get there. So stay tuned. Check out the next video to see how we get started on this venture together. And then keep up as we port processing to Flutter. I'll see you.